639 at KPL. Welcome back to Acadiana's Morning News on Tuesday, July 26th, 2016. And you know what the end of July means. Um, school zones are going to be in effect uh, really soon. Kids are going to be back at school, which means weeks. they won't just be hanging out. They'll be back in the classrooms. And, uh, you know, I, a lot of my teacher friends, you know yeah. what they're in? They're in, like, classroom decorating mode right oh, now. Oh, I bet. Someone said, uh, I'll have to find it. Someone put, um, you say you're not ready for school to start again. And it was a picture of Mari. And it said, but receipts <laughs> from Hobby Lobby, Target, and the Dollar Tree <laughs> prove that that is a lie. You know, everyone gets all excited about that. Joining us on the phone, State Superintendent John White. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Well, it's, thanks so much for joining us. So uh, as you know, you're, you're in it. And now you, as a State Superintendent, you have to love this time of year. I, I, to me, it's like my favorite. I grew up in a family of educators. And that time when you are setting up your classroom, you're looking forward to the new year, it's like you just have a blank page ready to go. Well, I love this time of year. I know we've got we've got 700,000 kids. I'm, I'm not sure if you get the same answer if you asked all of them. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, but I think, look, you're right about the teachers and, of course, parents. You know, it's been a, it's been a hot summer. Uh, parents have had their kids in camp and YMCA's and such, and it's good to get back to school. Of course, for our teachers, it's a time of great anticipation. And, you know, the truth is we announced yesterday that the results from last year were better than ever before on our state's ACT exams. That yes. means more kids going to college. And so it's a, we're coming into next year with a lot of momentum in our state, which is great. We have been reporting that um, so far this morning. Is this a trend that you guys expected, number one? And number two, what do you attribute the change to? Well, the change is always due to the ambitions of our kids and the hard work of our teachers, you know, uh, and there's there's no exception to that. I mean, that is the sole reason for the change. That said, we in the state capitol and we in our school systems can really help that by raising expectations. And the truth of it is, for the last five years, our state has been raising expectations. It has not been easy. It's not been easy for teachers. It's not been easy for parents. It's not even been easy for the policymakers and lawmakers in Baton Rouge. Uh, but it's working. It's higher ACT scores, it's higher graduation rates. It's more kids going to college. We're the second most advanced state in the country in terms of the progress we've made on advanced placement tests. So you know, these things mean something. They mean something for life opportunity for our kids, and that's why we've got to keep it going. You know, we wanted to have you on to talk about a series of forums that you have coming up, really to discuss the creation of educational opportunities here in the state that develop long-term plans for the state and the education of our kids. Uh, what do you hope to accomplish with these? Well, I'm going to be at Lafayette Middle today. Uh, later today, I'm going to be uh, in Old Lake Charles at Boston Academy talking with folks in Lake Charles as well. And, you know, I'm going to be talking about, in some respects, the federal government's new education law. The Congress passed into law last December a pretty sweeping set of changes in American education, and we in Louisiana are going to have to up our game. But the key thing is that we not get hung up in federal mandates and national politics and instead focus on our kids in Louisiana. And any change we make to our system in Louisiana has to be one that is good for students and that keeps the progress in our state going. That's what I want to talk with our, with our educators and our community members and our families about today. How do we keep the progress going in our state and how do we keep our expectations high? You know, I am a product of St. Tammany Parish Schools, uh, very proudly. And one of the things that I always found, and, and it was sort of my reality, so I assumed it was the reality everywhere. And I was, I learned quickly that it wasn't. But the number of academies that they have where you can, you can become a, you got kind of on your way to be an EMT when you're there. Um, there's Channel 13, which is the school board, uh, television station. That is the first place I ever put my hands on broadcasting and, and got to really learn it. Excuse me. But really it was, it kind of led to me not having any question when I went to college, exactly what I wanted to do and was able to graduate early. Cause it wasn't a, I didn't have to figure it out in college. I could figure it out in high school. And that's all, you know, Dr. Melody Swing, that's all you know, been her vision and, and what she's really done there. What about expanding those types of projects across the state? And do you see a benefit to them? Look, for, for two generations in the United States, we have perpetuated what I would call an ugly stigma against career education. And we have, as educators, and I'm a high school English teacher myself, but for too long, we've uh, 
put out there this idea that the only way to be a successful member of our society is to go to a four-year university and uh, to uh, go through, be a physics major or a political science major and or a broadcast journalism major. You know, and, and those things are great. But the truth of it is you can learn in a diverse set of uh, settings, and that includes on the job. And that may be at a, a television station, and I actually have seen the St. Tammany station. It's fantastic. It's but great, it could yeah. also be uh, learning to weld. It could be learning your early skills as a nurse. It could be learning to program and code uh, in the computer technology space. So, you know, all of those things could tap into, as you found in broadcast journalism, a lifelong passion for something that is irreplaceable for that child. That's why we've started statewide a program called Jumpstart. I've been thrilled. I was over at at, uh, South Louisiana Community College two weeks ago last week. I saw 500 educators from around the state getting their credentials to train to help kids get their job credentials. We've got to bring the dignity back to career education. It cannot be college or career. Kids should be able to do both. All right. Uh, State Superintendent John White, excuse me, is going to be in Lafayette today. At Lafayette Middle School, um, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. is is the meeting there. Uh, Looking for your input and, you know, other educators as well. It's just a, it's just a great time to sort of make a plan for our state going forward. Yes. I really appreciate y'all having me. If we keep our expectations for our kids high, they will rise to those expectations. We've got to keep the progress going. I appreciate your time this morning. Good luck today. Have a great time. 646 now at News Talk 96.5 KPL. There is a report of a traffic crash, Acacia Drive, just down from Lippy. That's Acacia Drive, just down from the area of Lippy. Alternating lane closures this week, nighttime hours starting after 9 o'clock. Uh, that'll be on I-10 over the basin and expected road work in the evenings on Cully Saloon Road between East Farrell and E. Broussard Road. So that'll be nighttime hours after 6 p.m., on Cully Saloon Road between East Farrell and E. Broussard Road. So you will see some closures, but traffic will move. It's just going to obviously be slow in that area. So just keep all of that in mind. Just kind of making your plans for the remainder of your week. Our traffic update brought to you by Compassion International. They release children from poverty every day through sponsors like you. Find out how at Compassion.com slash radio. Coming up, we've got your Dave Ramsey Daily Money Makeover. It's being brought to you by Broussard Poche LLP, Certified Public Accountants, your firm for a lifetime.